Then I am grade 3 student of Sussex College, Noorelia. Today I am going to talk about our nutrition meal. Normally we take three main meals for a day. That breakfast in the morning, lunch at noon, dinner at night. But we eat this meal time not only satisfy our hunger, but also help us to grow. It, it make our body strong and free of disease. It also give us energy to work and play. The food we eat every day, it's called our diet. Our diet should be a nutrition one with bodybuilding food, energy giving food, Protecting food. The protecting. So, when we eat, we must be sure that we have the all, all foods in our diet. First one, spread egg, fish, nuts, meat, milk, dumbbell, beans, cheese. These are the Proteins. Protein give us grow to grow and repair itself. Second one, energy giving food. Rice, rice, kurakan, potato, brown sugar, jack, wheat bread. Atafra, corn, yogurt. These are the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give us energy to work and play. Next, Protein. protecting food. Fruits, vegetable. Banana, guava, orange, mango, apple, pineapple, watermelon. These are the fruits and vegetable. Pa pumpkin, capsicum, tomato, brinjal, brinjal Be beet, cabbage. cabbage, cabbage and carrot. These are the vegetable. And these, these help us. Help us to grow, to give grow grow strong strong bones strong teeth keep yeah. us fr from free. free from disease thank you uh, thank you for, thank you for the
opportunity. Stay safe. Good morning everybody. Today I am here to present you about our diet. Uh, the food we eat every day is called our diet. Our diet should be a nutrition one with body building foods. These are the proteins, energy giving foods. These are the carbohydrates, protective foods. Uh, these are the uh, fruits and vegetables and the minerals. Thank you. Tulip 
Traverse made of eggshells, a vase made of a, bottle, a plastic bottle, a picture of a flower made of CDs, and a, a newspaper, a bag made of a newspaper. You also can make these handcrafts in your own. I hope you like my explanation. Thank you. precipitation and collection first comes the evaporation the sun heats the ocean river lake and other water bodies then the water evaporates and rises into the air second comes the condensation the water the vapor cools and condenses the droplets which become clouds Next comes the precipitation. If enough water condenses, the drops become heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain and snow. Finally comes the collection. Some rain collects in ground wells, the rest flow through rivers back to the ocean. This is how the water cycle happens. Now I think you have understood my presentation. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Ninsarani. I am from grade 5. I made the sketch of photosynthesis. I think if I explain you can get to know what is photosynthesis. This is my exhibit. Photosynthesis is the process in which Green plants use sunlight to make their own food. Photosynthesis is necessary for life on earth. Without it, there would be no green plants. Without green plants, there would be no animals. Photosynthesis requires sunlight. Photosynthesis requires sunlight. The leaf the plants pigment present in leaves we say chlorophyll water and carbon dioxide gas 
Plants combine carbon dioxide and water and in present present of sunlight so they are able to produce water oxygen and sugar uh, oxygen and sugar mm. the the sugar is the sugar is used to used to grow lucky uh, for us and other animals used to breathe Morning, all of you. My name is Kavi Shakthaya Sarah from Sussex College, Nora Elliot. I am in grade six. This is my motorboat. I took a piece of rigid foam, two batteries, a switch, two wires, a motor, a fan, and a piece of iron to make my motorboat. Now I am going to operate it. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Nimesh Oshadi from grade 6, Sussex College, Noor Area. Today I am going to talk about photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? The process that plants make their own food is called photosynthesis. They use sunlight, water, carbon dioxide from air to do photosynthesis. The roots absorb water and sunlight gives to all the energies that the plant needs. While doing this photosynthesis, the plant uses carbon dioxide and gives oxygen to the environment. Thank you. Hi friends, I am Shaima from grade 7. Today my topic is going to be solar power irrigation. What is solar irrigation? Solar irrigation uses the sun's energy to power a pump which supplies water to help crops to grow. The pump which is used to supply water is equipped with solar cells. The solar energy absorbed by the cells are then converted into electrical charges by a generator which then feeds an electrical motor driving the pump. Thank you. Good morning everybody. I am Madhuran Kalendran from grade 7. And a special thanks for Sussex College Noralia to give a great opportunity to do my science exhibit. So today I have did a saw gas stove. First of all, Shall we see what we need to do this saw gas stove? We need some saw dust and we need a tin without a lid and, and make sure to put a hole and put a hole on the bottom of the tin. Take a long PVC tube and a short PVC tube and take a matchbox. So, shall we see how to do this so gas stove? Now, insert this small, small PVC tube inside the hole in the bottom of the tin and take the long PVC tube and put it in the bottom of the tin. So, shall we take some sawdust and put it inside the tin?
So I have filled it up fully and make sure the long PVC tube and the short PVC tube should be in the middle of the tin. So now I will take this long PVC tube out. And now I will take the short PVC tube out. Now I will burn here. Now you can see it's burning in the bottom. Now we use this to make our food. Thanks to send your leisure time to see this video. Have a nice day. of these are getting the economic value and the low cost and a free and unlimited and it's so renewable source thank you I am in grade 8. I am going to talk about glass song. The things you will need 6 tall glass tumblers of the same size, a metal spoon motor method. Fill the 6 glass tumblers with the water to the burning heights. Tap the edge of the glasses with the spoon gradually. Starting from the one with less water, listen, one, listen to the sound carefully. You may hear that the sounds produced by glass tumblers differ different 
different lengths are different. It is clear that frequency of the sound produced differs according to the length of the air column vibrated. So friends, you you also try at home and get use of it. So friends, now you hear the sound. My name is Jalla Vansilu Abhisimya from Sussex College, Nuralia. Today I am going to explain about tectonic plates. Plates about tectonic is e scientific theory describing the larger scale motion of the plates. Making up the earth, it is its pure science. Tectonic pieces began on earth between, between uh, 3.3 and 3.5 billion years ago. The mobile on the conce uh, concept of the continents, drift and area developed during the first dis uh, decourse uh, of the 20th century. This is my tectonic plates. This is la uh, laterally sliding. This is uh, spending and this is lateral uh, spending and this is subtraction. Thank you. Two mountains act together and store green water is called a water tank. This is the model of the hydrogen station at Tiny. And this is the plan of the model of the hydrogen station. This is the door and this is the tunnel and this is the turbine. The motor goes through this door and it goes through the tunnel to the turbine. And it rotates and generates electricity. Thank you. I'm Good morning to everyone. I am from Sussex College, New Aurelia. I have made a boat. It is made out of a plastic container, a wire, battery, a switch and a motor fan. Now let's see how it's working. Welcome to our solar system. I am Sweta from grade 8. I am Divisha from grade 8. We are from Sussex College, New Aurelia. And we are here to explain our exhibit about the solar system. This is the exhibit we made. Now Sweta will explain about our solar system. The solar system is made up of celestial bodies such as the sun, planets, dwarf planets, etc. Now Divisha will explain about Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. It is the smallest planet in the entire solar system. Venus is the second planet in the solar system and it is the planet that has the highest surface temperature. Earth is the only planet which has life in it. It has only one natural satellite called the Moon. We get day and night because of the rotation of the Earth. Mars. Mars is the fourth planet in the solar system. It has two natural satellites called Phobos and Deimos. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and it is the fastest spinning planet in our solar system. Saturn is the sixth planet in the sun from the solar system and it has an attractive set of ring around it. Uranus is the seventh planet in our solar system. It has 27 natural satellites in it. Ur Neptune is the eighth and the last planet in the solar system and it, it has 14 natural satellites. Now we have come, we have reached our end of our exhibit. So shall we travel around our solar system? Planets are separated in, as inner and outer planets. They are separated by the asteroid belt. We hope you liked our exhibit.
Thank you. This is a model of a vacuum cleaner. I used a big plastic bottle as its body. I fixed a flexible plastic tube to the lid of the bottle and the top part of a small bottle to the end of the flexible tube. I used an empty glue bottle as its handle and a cooling fan of a CPU box as the fan here. When I switch on the model, it takes the dust in like this. This net inside prevents the dust to get stuck in the fan. I am Danodia from grade 9. I have a snake a exhibit for our science exhibition. This is the exhibit that I have made for our exhibition. This is a simple structure of the dam. This is the main part of the dam. Uh, it stores the water in this part and uh, collect the rain water for this uh, and uh, it is flowed to this this part. This part generates the electricity for this turbine. By this turbine, uh, this bulb is uh, lightning. Uh, that means the electricity is supplied for this uh, from this turbine to this uh, bulb. After this, this remaining water is flown to the village tank. This tank uh, is flown to these wells, paddy fields and for uh, other drinking purposes and lots of ma many uh, other things of human needs. Water is essential for us so that uh, this water should be conserved. By this part, we can conserve for this whole uh, village. Thank you. Microorganisms are categorized into five groups as bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae and virus. This is the structure of a bacteria. This is the cell membrane, flagella, cilia, ribosome and DNA. Bacteria and protozoa are unicellular and microscopic organisms. Fungi and algae can be both unicellular and multicellular and some can be seen through the naked eye. Example, mushroom, vulva. Viruses which show both living and non-living characteristics are also a type of microorganisms. The best example for viruses as you all know is COVID-19. Hello, I am Sasan Samarivira from grade 11, Sussex College in uh, Today I am going to explain you about the ex uh, excretory system. The excretory system is a passive biological system that removes excess unnecessary materials from the body fluids of an organism so as to help maintain internal chemical homeostasis and prevent damage, damage to the body. The excretory system starts in our kidneys. These organs are located in the upper abdominal area against the back muscle. The left and the left, uh, the left and the right sides uh, of our body that acts filter devices for our body. Then, when we put some liquid. The, the urine will pass then uh, 
when the blood uh, when the blood passes through the kidneys uh, it gets clean and separates into into the base compound couple of the tubes called uterus uh, finally when the bladder is full the urine will pass uh, thank you I am Meshan from Sussex College, New Delhi. Today, I am going to speak about nervous system. The nervous system is highly complex part of our body that coordinates our action and sensory information by transmitting signals to and from different parts of our body. The nervous system dictates environmental changes that impact the body. They works in tem with the endocrine system to respond to such events in vertebrates it consists of two main parts they are central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system at the cellular level the special type of nervous cell called the nephron it has special structure to allow them to send signals rapidly to other cells the size of the nervous ranges up to near 100 cells thank you i am dion from grade 11 sussex college new delhi autonomic nervous system what is autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is the nervous system that supplies internal organs including heart kidney stomach liver urinary bladder and digestive glands autonomic nervous system has two main divisions sympathetic and parasympathetic what is sympathetic sympathetic nervous system div- sympathetic nervous system division of the nervous system that functions to the that functions to the produce localized localized adjustments such as sweetening as a sweetening as a response to an response to an increasing in temperature and uh, and reflex adjustment and reflex adjustment of the cardiovascular system what is parasympathetic 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 nervous system is responsible for the body rest and rest and responsible for the body rest and digestive response when body is relaxed resting or feeding it be parasympathetic basically undoes the work of sympathetic system parasympathetic stimulates flow of saliva flows heart beat constrict bronchi stimulates peristalsis and secretion uh, contrast bladder and stimulates release of bile S- sympathetic inhibits flow of saliva accelerates heart beats dilates bronchi inhibits peristalsis and secretion conversion of glycogen to gl- glucose and he- inhibits bladder contraction autonomic nervous system plays the main main part main role of this ne- main role of the body automatically thank you sanitary manja aka of grade level from sussex college in varnia i am going to demonstrate a working model of our respiratory system the basic phenomena and its functions the air which we breathe in is oxygen this air passes through the nostril and enters the human body through the nasal cavity in the nasal cavity the air is filtered through hair like specialized structure called cilia The nasal cavity also secretes mucus which helps in trapping dust particles easily and moves it from uh, blocks it from moving in here. Uh, the nasal cavity also provides moisture and uh, warmth to air. The nasal cavity has specialized sensory organs that are sensitive to uh, odor and smell and yes that is the reason why our nose uh, our nose is a sensory organ. Near to the nasal cavity is a much wider cavity called the pharynx. The pharynx is a common passage of Uh, air and food of air and food it, it is easily visible when you open your mouth to eat uh, when you swallow food sometimes you cough because the food you have ate have uh, accidentally entered the other pipe this is because the pharynx has a cartilaginous flap like structure called cartilaginous flap like uh, flap like structure called um, epiglottis the epiglottis prevents uh, the epiglottis prevents the uh, food from um, entering the wood pipe inner to the pharynx is a um, is a uh, is another cavity called the larynx 
This is also known as the voice box. Uh, uh, inner, to the, uh, inner to the larynx is a four tube like structure called uh, four inch tube like structure called the trachea. There are many cartilages organs present on the trachea. These cartilages organs prevent the food pipe from collapsing. Uh, along with the trachea, the trachea divides into two parts as the primary bronchus and the bronchus and the bronchiole. These bronchus divide further as bronchioles. Bronchioles run throughout the uh, throughout parenchyma tissues. At the end of each bronchiole, there is an air filled sac called uh, alveoli. This alveoli uh, is wrapped in capillaries of four red blood cells, getting a special coughing called hemoglobin. Uh, when uh, when air is breathed, it passes the air, the breath air is passed uh, uh, passed the breath air passes through the alveoli and um, passes pa air, breath air passes along the alveoli in along to inflate, letting it along to inflate. At this point, the capillaries it is filled with carbon dioxide and the air sacs is filled with oxygen. Uh, so due to the process, basic process of diffusion, the molecules of the two gases wants to move to a place where there is a lower concentration uh, so as a result oxygen um, as a result as a result oxygen crosses over to the uh, process over to the capillaries uh, capillaries and hemoglobin grabs it out uh, and hemoglobin grabs it out uh, the, and then uh, the lungs is filled with carbon dioxide so what do these lungs do with the carbon uh, do with carbon dioxide the lungs exhale the exhale carbon dioxide. So this is the uh, so this is the basic uh, basic basic structure of a respiratory system, and this is the way how it works. When we come air, the lungs increase. So this is so this is so this is a working model of a respiratory system. Thank you. A student of grade 11 Sussex College known earlier. Today I'll be discussing about the organs in the digestive system and how the digestive system happens. Across the whole planet humans eat an average between 1 to 2.7 kilograms of food a day. That's over 365 kg a year per person and more than 28,800 kilograms over the course of lifetime at every last crab makes its way through the digestive system. The digestive system comprises of 10 organs covering 9 meters over 20 plus specialized cell types. This is the most of the, di most of the diverse and complicated systems in the human body. Its parts continuously work in unison in full of a singular task, transforming the raw materials of your food in the neurons and energy that keeps you alive. Spending the entire link that your digestive system have four main components. First, there is a gastrointestinal tract. It transports your food and has an internal surface area up between 30 and 40 meters, enough to cover a badminton court. Second, there is pancreas, gallbladder and liver and are the three organs that break down food using special juices. Third, uh, third the body's enzymes, hormones, nerves, blood, all work together to break down food to maturate the digestive process and delivers its final product. Finally, there's a mystery, a large stretch of tissue that supports in um, supports and positioning in all your digestive organs that supports in the abdomen, enabling them to do their jobs. To do their jobs, the the, the digestive system begins before the food even hit your tongue. Due to its smell, your glances in your mouth pumps out saliva. Do you know that we produce 1.5 liters of uh, saliva each day? The gast first we'll be talking about the gastrointestinal tract. It transports food through the esophagus to the stomach, and the food will be stored in the stomach for about three to four hours. Then it starts uh, bumping through the tissues in the stomach, and then it goes through the stomach to the small intestine, and then it stays there for a couple of minutes. Then. Uh, after the food is stored in small intestine, it goes through the large intestine to the reticulum and then for about two, uh, two and a half minutes it stays in the reticulum and then uh, alarm will be given to us saying that we should uh, release the food that uh, release the stool that we had kept in our body for about five hours. So that is how the digestive system works. This can be shown through a liquid going through a saline tube.
so this is how the food goes through the esophagus to the stomach to the duodenum and go uh, retains in the small intestine and goes through the large intestine to the reticulum and it passes out thank you